او بلا بتروح في المصلى صلى الله عليه وسلم اشمن شلون سي بخاري فولم نمبر 7 حديث نمبر 5090 as well as in say muslim volume number 4 hey yo what's up everybody welcome back to our channel it's your boy jesse keegan and we are funny jesse so right about now we're gonna do another reaction video and we're gonna jump in straight into the video so today we're gonna do islam love before wedding and this is by dr zaki mike so without any further ado guys get it the first question that has come on the whatsapp which has been selected by my group first question is from brother yusuf shuhaib ghana what are the basic guidelines in islam for choosing a spouse a similar question is asked by najiba afghanistan I am a 16 year old girl. How can we love someone in an Islamic way before marriage? And a similar question asked by Abdullah Mohsin from Dubai UAE. If it is not too personal, can we know how did you select a life partner? <laughs> the first question posed by the brothers is what are the guidelines regarding choosing a life partner or a spouse in Islam? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 5090, as well as in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 3635. It is a muttafiq alaik. It's a hadith present in Bukhari, as well as in Sahih Muslim. It's mentioned, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, that women, are chosen in marriage for four things the wealth the lineage or nobility beauty and religion choose her for the religion here in this hadith our beloved prophet says that women in marriage are chosen for four things wealth lineage nobility third is beauty and fourth <coughs> is religion and the best is religion. That means choose the woman who is religious. <coughs> Here we come to know that the maximum importance that should be given is to the religion. Because all the earlier three criteria which people normally look for in marriage, it is limited and mainly for this dunya. For example, wealth. Wealth is something which can maybe get to some luxury in this world but may not be beneficial in the akhirah as the beloved prophet said it is more difficult for a rich man to go to jannah than a poor man but it's not haram to have wealth but it is not the major criteria you should look for the second is lineage looking at the lineage and the family it's good but that is not the main it is mainly for the dunya you may say you're coming from a very good family from a noble family the third criteria is beauty, which is again limited only to this world. Beauty is something which you may get tired of in a few days or a few weeks or a year. The best and everlasting, mainly for the akhirah as well as for the dunya, is religion. It is the deen. And if I was to pay any weightage in choosing, this is my own opinion, that if a boy wants to choose a girl, 90 to 95 percent should be for the deen, for the religion. Because that will get him akhirah as well as the dunya. Yes, as far as the wealth is concerned, if a boy wants to marry a girl, then what use is the wealth of the girl to that boy? A good boy who has his own self-respect, but naturally would not like to live on the money of the woman, of the wife. So irrespective whether the girl is rich or poor, what difference will it make him? And even if he's going to use, that is only for this dunya. The lineage may or may not help that will not really count much the beauty as i said is subjective as long as the wife is not repulsive so maybe you can give about three or four points or three or four percent weightage to the beauty as long as she's not repulsive the dean is the maximum 90 to 95 percent of the weightage should be given to the dean if it's a boy choosing a girl 
If a girl is choosing a boy, then wealth may carry certain weight because if the girl is used Location, to having certain comfort in life, but naturally she cannot marry a boy who is living on the street. So if it's a girl marrying a boy, then the wealth may have certain weightage, maybe, maybe about 10% mass. The lineage, maybe 1%. And the Number. handsomeness of the boy, as long as he's not repulsive, but natural because you want to live with the spouse for the full life, you should be satisfied. But mentally, if you make up a mind, you know, if you really, it's all in your mind, any girl can seem to be beautiful, it's in your mind. So the handsomeness or the beauty carries a smaller percentage. So for the man, the religion, I would say, would carry 90-95% marks. And for the woman, when she's looking for a spouse, maybe would carry approximately 85% marks, the religion, the deen, which is the most important. Anyway, this percentage is from my side, it is not from the hadith. The hadith is very clear that the most important is the religion, that's it. This is my percentage. Regarding the second question posed by the sister, that can we have an Islamic love before marriage? Regarding the love before marriage that we have nowadays in the modern society, in the Western society, but natural it is haram. There is no LBW. LBW in the cricket you have like before wicked. LBW is love before wedding. So the way we have in the Western culture where there are girlfriend, boyfriend and they want to test each other, they go out to a park and they go out for a movie, they sit in the last bench of the theater or they want to enjoy, they go for dinner, and they talk, and they may go to a hotel and sleep overnight. All these things is haram in Islam. Yes, you can, while selecting a life partner, have interview along with the mahram. If a boy is going to look at a girl, then maybe the boy's sister is there, or the girl's father is there, along with the mahram. But natural, you can ask questions, you can interview for a few minutes, for half an hour, for one hour, there's no limit, you can have one meeting, two meetings, no problem to understand because you want to spend the full life with the girl and the girl with the boy. But going out alone and being in seclusion, you know the shaitan is there, the prophet said that if there are two nahmeram alone, the third person is the devil. So in the Islamic way, yes, you can interview, but the love before marriage, what we have in the normal sense in the Western world, it is prohibited. Islamic way, yes, you can have. For example, you may know, the girl may know of a boy who is Islamic, who is very religious, who has high taqwa, who prays five times salah in the mosque, and is a dai, and the girl may want to have a good life partner. So Islamically what she does is that she proposes to the boy who she thinks is religious, through her father, or through her brother, or the parents of the girl go and meet the parents of the boy, and in the Islamic way it's possible. This sort of love because you like the religious values and the deen in the boy, it is permissible. Islamically, if you go ahead following the rules and regulation, not breaking the Sharia, it is possible in this way if you want to call it love before marriage because you like the religious aspects in the boy or the boy likes religious aspects in the girl. In this way, not breaking any rules of the Islamic Sharia, then you can call it a sort of love before marriage Islamically, but saying to it that you don't break any of the rules of the Sharia. As far as the third question posed to me is that if it's not too personal, the brother would like to know that how did I select my life partner? And as many of you may be aware that I met Sheikh Ahmed Didad in 1987 the first time when I was 22 years old and I was impressed by him and that's how I got involved in the field of Dawa and my life became more Islamic. Previously, I was an average Muslim praying five times a day, fasting and doing what normal Muslims should do. But the Dawah came into my life after I met Sheikh Ahmed Didad. And once I started doing Dawah, and by last grace, Alhamdulillah, I realized that I was good in debating, I was good in convincing. So I thought, as far as choosing a life partner for me, inshallah, inshallah, no problem. Any girl I marry, I will be able to convince her maybe in a few weeks or a few months or no problem, the girl I'll be able to convince. This was in the initial stages when I was a novice, when I didn't have much knowledge. But naturally, later on, as the years passed, I realized that very important, reading the hadith of the Prophet and knowing the other aspects of Islam, that choosing a life partner is very important. And at that time, I thought, 
that the right age for a Muslim boy to get married is 25. That was my idea that time. Now also, now it may be a little bit earlier. So at that time I thought that 25 years is the best time for a person to get married when he finishes his graduation and he can marry. And at the age of 25 when I started to look for a girl and realizing having more knowledge of the deen, reading the hadith and the Quranic verses, my criteria was based on the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad which is in Bukhari and Muslim, that while choosing a girl you look for four things. First is the wealth, second is the lineage, the nobility, third is the beauty, fourth is the deen, and the best is the deen. You should choose a girl for deen. And this hadith was in green in my mind, and I decided I want to marry a girl who is as religious as possible. More religious than me. That was my aim, to get a girl who is in the field of dawah and religious. So I told my sister, that look out for a girl and my only criteria number one is Deen. Regarding wealth, the poorer she is, better for me because I don't want to use any of her wealth. Lineage it doesn't matter and beauty she should not be repulsive. That was my requirement and with this requirement I told my sister that she should find for me a life partner and believe me for two years she hunted and she <laughs> may have searched many girls and unfortunately not a single one did she pass not a single of the girl who she thought and who she interviewed ever passed even the prelims later on we got information that there is a muslim a muslim girl in a neighboring city pune which is 160 kilometers from bombay where i lived and we came to know that she was the head, the president of a ladies Islamic Dawa organization. And I went along with my sister and my mother and I went to Pune. I traveled all the way. I drove for a few hours and I went to Pune and that's how the first time I met my wife. And that time she wasn't aware and we met her and we spoke to her, spoke to her mother, my mother was there and my sister was there, her mother was there, she was there and later on when we went back then we sent the proposal and then we had a formal meeting. The first wasn't a formal meeting just we went and we met through one of our common friends and when we had the formal meeting we had for a few hours and Alhamdulillah she was the first girl I met or I interviewed or I interacted to be my would-be wife and Alhamdulillah the first was the best and Allah blessed me MashaAllah with a wonderful wife and Alhamdulillah I consider it to be one of the best gifts that Allah has given me besides the Iman that Allah has given me the best gift that Allah gave me is my wife and she was from Pune and in the first interview itself it was nearly final. Right? Then we had another meeting. My basic criteria was that she should be religious and she should be a Dai. These were the two criteria, religious and Dai. And I could not find a girl better than her at that time. Already more than 27 years have passed for our marriage. At that time I could not find anyone better in my knowledge. And Alhamdulillah, this was the only criteria. The remaining was not at all important. But Alhamdulillah, even though I wasn't looking for beauty, MashaAllah, Allah SWT gave me a beautiful wife. And as I said, the beauty is in your mind. And Alhamdulillah. And many people used to ask me that now you're giving so many hours for dawah, maybe you know, about nine, ten hours for dawah. Once you get married, you'll have to give time to your wife. How will you be able to manage both? So one of the reasons that I married a girl who is a daya, so that it's a Venn diagram. Most of her time would overlap. So when I gave approximately five hours to her in a day, maybe three hours were discussing dawa. And then we started an Islamic organization, Ladies Wing, in my organization, Islam Research Foundation. The moment we got married, 
first thing we did was started a ladies wing and she was the president of the ladies wing of Islam Research Foundation. So my main criteria was only Deen and Dawa and but natural in the interview the question and asked was based on about what is the concept of purpose of life and other things. So basically these two are the criteria and Allah blessed me and the best blessing for a Dai is to have a righteous and supporting life partner. For a Dai the wife can make the life of a Dai hell. I know many Dais who are very good Dais but after marriage the Dawa has been ruined because of the spouse. Allah has blessed me mashallah and I consider my wife to be the best wife in the world that's what I consider alhamdulillah and I thank Allah for giving me a spouse who was righteous and because of her after marriage my Dawa increased multiple times and kept on increasing more and more to the level now alhamdulillah Allah blessed me and therefore choosing a life partner is very important and as the Prophet said look for a life partner who's religious look for deen in her the other criteria are not at all important most important is religious and virtuous hope this answers the question wow <clears throat> amazing oh my god really amazing. i like this so uh if you find uh, your life partner there are four ways wealth nobility um, beauty and religious or religion the best way is is she religious enough you get it I think that's the best thing and one thing I got from the whole uh, discussion was that um, God or Allah or the universe the best thing Allah can give you is a religious wife you get my point because with the really with with the religious wife that you know that you're going to spend the rest of your life with that's the one that is going to probably push you to that limit or maybe um um elevate you to another level or probably if if, if not to elevate you to another level it's just like you know when you have somebody who has the same energy imagine you're going to a place and your energy actually is the same as the people who are uh, in that particular place I mean it's so amazing and the vibration rises up so quickly you get it so imagine if you have uh, a wife that has the same vibration than you or maybe she she has a higher vibration than you or something you get it it's it's so motivational and it's so it's so good I feel so it's so so amazing and uh, man I've learned a lot actually I've learned something really good today especially when it comes to those four things most of the people go to wives or maybe uh, husbands because of wealth because of um uh because of nobility or something like that or because of beauty but dr zakinaik has actually explained it and broke it down in a very very good way you know i mean uh, when it comes to beauty when it comes to beauty it's in it's, uh it's it's like uh you know be, um beauty is in the eye of the beholder you get it i mean for me okay fine you can be beautiful but again do you have the heart are you are you that religious you get it are you that spiritual are you are you the kind of a person who you will actually uh you know meditate or pray for me when i'm out there trying to do something or maybe you know all those kind of things you get my point those are the are the little things that add up to a relationship that makes it even uh, more stronger and it, st it strengthens things very quickly and one thing i want to point out here is that him and the wife they were doing the same thing do, do you see that i don't know if that makes sense um the wife was a leader at the islamic whatever thing and he was also you know this guy who's trying to um become also probably a leader or something like that which is something that maybe we should consider when you're looking for your spouse or something but i'm not saying that you should go look for a spouse that um, if you're in construction you also have to go to a spouse who does construction no uh probably in a religious aspect or something anyway man such an amazing uh, video right here thank you for the people who actually suggested in this video you guys are really amazing if you feel like i reacted to this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down our comment section tell us exactly what you feel about this video right here thank you thank you so much and what do you think about um what do you think about my reaction what do you think about this video of islamic love before wedding 
you get it just let me know in the comment section below and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more you keep on subscribing then we give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least i'm going to see you in the next video and peace out